Alright, good morning my dear friends. I just want to take the time out to just bring to you a dynamic message that God has today for His people. We're going to be dealing with the book of 2 Kings chapter 6 where Elisha, amen, speaks the word of God to an army, amen, and that army goes blind according to his words that he speaks. And I want to let you know that through this message that God has something great for you today. So I want you to stay tuned, and I'll see you after this fantastic anointed word of God. Lay your hands upon them, oh God. Somebody need a healing on this morning, God. Somebody need a hand touch, God, that you would touch. He called over both shot. That you would touch him right now, God, and move mightily upon him in the name of Jesus. That you would break every chain, every stronghold in the name of Jesus. You would cancel every assignment of the enemy this day in the name of Jesus. Take your hands off their family. Take their, your hands off their children in the name of Jesus. We command you this day, devil, loose your hold right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. And dear God, we give you praise and we give you glory. Yeah. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen with me. Yeah. Come on, say amen one more time. Yeah. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't he worthy to be praised this morning? Yeah. Thank God for every testimony that went forth on today. And we give God praise, amen, for what he's doing. We are in crucial times now, amen. I was looking at the news on this morning, amen, in uh, Orlando. Florida, young man that killed about 20 people and 50 people, 50 people, my God, amen. It lets us know just how close we are, amen, to the end, amen. The Bible speaks about the love of men's heart is going to wax cold towards one another in the last times that we are living in. Amen. And it's so sad, amen, I tell you, to just hear such sad news as of that. But nevertheless, we realize that these things are going to come to pass, amen, that we are encountering, amen, in these last days that we are living in. And the only protection that we have is in God. I'm going to say it one more time. The only protection that we have in the last days that we are living in is God. That's the only protection that we got. Because see, when we got Christ, amen, it doesn't matter if our life is taken. See, he can kill the natural man, but there's another man on the inside that the devil can't destroy. Somebody shout glory. Amen. He said, fear him not only that is able to destroy the body, but fear him that is able to destroy the body and the soul. And the only man got that kind of power is God. Somebody shout glory. Amen. Knowing that we got to get ourselves in preparation. We've got to get ready. Amen. It's a lot of people that don't want to die. Amen. But we don't know. Amen. The beautiful thing, sometimes folks ask God, why did this person leave? Sometimes God wants to prepare his people to be ready. The natural aspect of it is a sad thing. But when you know God. But when you know Jesus, amen, it's not a sad story. Because we enter from, immort from mortality, the Bible says, into immortality, everlasting life. No more dying, no more weeping. But we've got to get prepared to realize one thing. We've got to get ready to go, church. Somebody say, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. Amen. It may be a year, two, three years, 10, 20, 30 years. But we all got to get ready to leave this natural corrupted world. Yes. Amen. So we're going to be going into the book this morning of 2 Kings chapter 6. And while you're finding it, we're talking about Elisha, the man of God. He has a servant with him. Amen. But there's a king that comes against the man of God. How many know it's hard to come against a man of God? Y'all ain't going to help me. It's hard to come against a man of God. But what he's doing, he's preparing, amen, the other younger prophet that's underneath him, that if God be for you, y'all ain't going to help me, it's getting quiet here, that if God be on your side, who can be against you? 
he's getting prepared, amen, we find that the king has already, amen, mandated, amen, his life. And he tells his men, I want you to make get prepared, get the carriage and get the horses ready because I want you to go after that man of God. Amen. We're going to get into the word of God. Amen. So he says, amen, in the sixth chapter of 2 Kings chapter 6. And the first verse reads, and the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray in the second verse, let us go, we pray thee unto Jordan. And look what he says, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there we will, that we may thee well. And he answered and he tells them to go ye. But look what he says in the third verse, and one said, be content. I pray thee, and go with thy servants, and he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down woods. Uh-huh. And the Bible says, get with me to that sixth verse. And the man of God said, where fell it? And he showed them the place. And he cut down a stick and cast it tighter, and the iron swam, therefore. And he take it, it up to thee, and he put on his hand. But look, I just want you to skip down with me, Aban, to the 12th verse. To the 12th verse. And the Bible says, And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel. Tell the king of Israel the words that thou speak it in thy bedchamber. And he said, listen what I want you to do. Go and spy where he is. Who is he? He's talking about the man of God. I want you to go and spy out where this man of God is. I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, behold, he is in Dohan. Therefore, sent he tighter horses and carrots and a great hope and compass the city about. Now listen, he sends them out to Dohan after the man of God. I want you to listen very carefully. God put this message in my spirit the other day. I was, sometime God put a, a message in my spirit. I could be outside driving a car or going to the gas station. But he puts, amen, a word and our spirit a lot of time to give someone some encouragement. Right. Amen. That's right. Yes. To encourage the church. Yes. Amen. That through the power of God. Yes. Listen, it's God have never changed. We change. Yes. God never changed. We change. But I want you to understand what's taking place is that the king, amen, sends out spies to find out where is the man of God? See, sometimes the enemy sends out and launches out demonic spirits against his people. See, because if he got you already, he ain't going to worry about you. Y'all getting kind of quiet on me. So what he does, I'm getting ready to get in this word, amen, a little deeper. I'm just trying to give you some understanding of what is happening. The king, amen, decides that, listen, what I want to do is send an army out. Because we're going to take him captive. Amen. You know, whenever you're doing something with God, the enemy is always going to try to want to stop you, amen, from doing the will of God. He's always going to try to hinder you from doing the will of God. But listen, the man of God had no fear because he already knew what God was getting ready to do. Listen what he says, amen. So he says, amen, in that 14th verse, one more time, therefore sent he tither horses, and carrots and a great host and they came by night past the city about night. It wasn't just a few men but we're talking about thousands of men that can pass the city just for one man. Now look what he says. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forward, look what he says. Behold and host can pass the city boat with horses and carrots. And his servant said unto him, Allies, my master, how shall we do? So he asked the question, 
that when the enemy has attacked you, let me get to my part. That when the enemy has thought he had a plan to detour you or to back you up, amen, or to stop you in your tracks, amen, God has always prepared a way. See, he was trying to get the young man to understand one thing, Ursula. That if God be with you, see a lot of folks stop when things start going wrong. Well, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Look like nothing going right. Look like it ain't. the devil always fight me. Look like nothing ever going right in life. Look like my children acting up. Look like my money is funny. Look like I ain't going to never be to get ahead. But see what the man of God did, amen, is that he tells the servant, wait a minute. See, one thing about it, when the enemy comes against us, just like he has demonic spirits, God has angels. Somebody say angels with me. You got to understand, man, that God has placed angels over the lives of his people. I want you to be very mindful and careful this morning to this message because what God is doing, amen, he's meeting the need of somebody this morning that's going through something and the enemy has tried to stop you and limit you from where you're going. But you've got to know that one thing, amen, that the man that God knew without a doubt that if God was with him it does not matter how many people was coming against him. I want you to know one thing, amen, is that he encourages, amen, the servant that was with him. Look what he tells his servants, amen. And the Bible says that the prophet answers, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Oh my God, good mighty mighty. He tells the servant of God that is with him, amen, listen, that if you're going to walk with me, you're going to have to see what I see. Y'all ain't going to help me. It's getting kind of quiet. If you're going to follow me, amen, you're going to have to be able to see what I see. Amen. You're going to be able to walk in the prophetic anointing to believe God against every demonic spirit that has came against you. You got to know without a shadow of a doubt, hallelujah, that God will prevail. Somebody say God will prevail. That God will prevail. You see, when the enemy starts trying to attack your mind, the only way he can stop you is if he get on inside of the mind. Amen. See, a lot of people start backing up on a thought. Amen. All the enemy does is put a mirage. Amen. He puts something to make it seem like that is there in reality. It's actually not. Amen. So what he does, amen, is that he tells the servant of God because he could not see what the man of God seen. The man of God says, listen, hold on. I don't want you to get fearful. The servant looks. He said, wait. I see an army of people that have surround the city. He said, listen, I don't want you to be be afraid. Wait a minute. How can you tell me, don't be afraid, they that are with us is more than them that are against us. Oh my good God Almighty. Somebody shout glory. Come on, shout glory. When you start believing God, no matter how it look, God is already dispatching angels to go before you. Somebody shout glory. Amen. What happened was, amen, is that the servant that was following the man of God couldn't see. But I want you to understand that what he prayed and asked God to do. Look what he says, amen. He tells, amen, that 17th verse. Zoom with me in the 17th verse. Look what Elisha says. Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, behold, the mountains was full of horses and carriages of fire round about them. Amen. There was angels that was on the mountaintop as fire sitting on that mountaintop. Y'all ain't going to help me get excited. Somebody shout glory. Come on, shout glory. Come on, shout glory. What happened was, amen, is that the man of God was able to see what the other man couldn't see. Y'all ain't gonna help me get excited, man. Some folks say, man, can't see above situations when they're going through something. That's why at times when we're going through something, amen, you can't always tell somebody that don't see what you see. Y'all ain't gonna help me get excited, man. 
See, a lot of times, amen, when we go through something, we can't go to somebody that can't help us get out of what we in. Come on, shout glory. Come on, shout glory. Shout glory. Hallelujah. Because he already knew that the only trust that he had was in God. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sometimes, amen, the only person that can really comfort you and allow you to know that everything's going to be all right is God. But you've got to see beyond what you're dealing with, amen. See, the devil will make you believe that what you've been believing God for will never come to pass. He'll make you try to believe that whatever God is doing in your life, amen, that it'll never happen, amen. But what happened was that the man of God seen, amen, the angels was already there. Amen. Somebody shout glory. Shout glory. Shout glory. But he had already made up his mind. Amen. Listen. He said, wait a minute. I'm going to pray for you that God would open up your eyes. Amen. That you might see. See, some folks don't know, amen, that it's already there, that God has already prevailed and made a way. See, while you still shouting with your head down, Lord, and crying, the way is already made. Amen. The angels of the Lord is already in their proper places, amen. You've got to praise him in advance, amen, because he already knows that while you going through something, amen, he's already made a way. Somebody say he's made a way. That while you going through something, he's already input and establish the angel of the Lord to go on your part. No matter what it might be. See, the only way the devil can stop you is if you don't see, amen, in the spiritual aspect. Because what he's doing, amen, he's not fighting you on the natural, but that's a spiritual war going on. That if you don't see, amen, you won't be able to recognize the devices of the enemy. Y'all ain't going to help me shout, amen. See, but Elisha, amen, already knew that they was in their place, amen. See, he already knew that when they was coming after him, amen, he was praying a praying man, amen. And he was already prepared, amen, when they came. Because what he did, amen, he knew the angels were there. He tells God, he asked him rather, he said, God, open up his eyes that he may be able to see. And see, a lot of times when we're going through something, all God wants you to do is give him praise. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because what God is getting ready to do this morning, amen, that's some folks right in this, in this church this morning, that what God is doing, he put this message on my heart, is that if you can only see, amen, what God has already prepared for you, amen, it doesn't matter what you might be going through right now, but God has already made a way. It doesn't matter how the enemy tries to make you think that it'll never turn around. It'll never happen. Amen. It happened to your mother. It happened to your sister. Y'all ain't gonna make me shout. See, let me get down here, man. Because somebody need to get this this morning. See, what he'll try to do is make you believe, amen, that your mama had cancer, amen, that your grandmama had cancer. Somebody ain't gonna help me get excited, amen. See, what he'll try to do, if he can get it in your mind, because that's how my grandma died, amen. I'm going to probably die the same way, amen. See, you got to make up in your mind already, amen. It doesn't look, make it looks like it seems to be, but you've got to see, amen, that whatever might have went through my family, amen, is not going to affect me. I'm not going to allow you to dictate my life. So what he does, amen, is that he tells the man of God that what I want you to do, I want you to get prepared because what God is getting ready to do, he's about to open up your eyes. Somebody say he's going to open up my eyes. Somebody say he's about to open up my eyes, amen. Because what you might have been dealing with and what you've been going through, amen, you're about to get ready to see what God is about to do. Somebody say he's going to turn it around. Somebody say he's about to turn it around, amen. The Bible says that when the man of God asks God this question, he says, Lord, 
open up his eyes. Yeah. Open up to what? To what God has for you. Yeah. Somebody shout glory. He's getting ready to open up your eyes to see that God is on your side. Yeah. Somebody shout glory. Yeah. Come on, shout glory. Yeah. See, a lot of times the enemy tries to make us believe, amen, that God didn't hear your prayer. Yeah. Somebody shout glory. Yeah. But if you can only see in advance yeah. that the way is already prepared. Yeah. That God has already done it. Amen. Yeah. See, all the man of God wanted his servant to do was to be able to see what he seen. Amen. So what happened was, amen, that's why a lot of people, amen, can't be around you at all times. Because some people don't see what you see. Somebody shout glory. Oh, no, no. Some people get to talking negative about they get pole mouthing it. I'll never have. Nothing ever going to change. I'll never have this. Ain't nothing going my way. But you've got to turn that thing around. Somebody say turn it around. Somebody say turn it around. You've got to turn that thing around and begin to see a man spiritual. You've got to begin to see a man the things that God has already prepared for you. Somebody shout glory. Come on, shout glory. The only way that he was able to see those angels on that mountaintop, can you imagine? God never changes. God still has angels today. God never changed. We change. Yes. God still ain't have angels today that go on our behalf. Hallelujah. It does not matter what we encounter or go through. God still has angels. Amen. A lot of folks don't believe in angels, but angels destroy the whole city. Come on. Amen. Now. Angels are prevalent right now. Yes. They come to rescue people every day. Amen. That God sends them on different missions. Amen. Amen. But he lets the man of God know. Amen. Not only am I going on your defense. But what I'm doing. Amen. I'm going on the defense for your servant. Thank you. See he was going. Amen. With the prophet in preparation. And following the man of God. As an example of being a prophet. As he was coming up. And sometimes when people. Amen. Follow you. They are looking for example. Amen. Because whatever you say, amen, is going to affect them. Amen. Somebody shout glory. Amen. So what Elisha did, amen, he knew, amen, yeah. that the only way this gentleman is going to continue to be to walk with me, yeah. he's got to see what I see. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. See, because his eyes was closed oh. to the fact of the matter that those angels were on that hill. Amen. Oh, and the only way that he'd be able to see, it wasn't until the man of God began to pray. Yeah. Somebody to say pray. pray. The man of God prays and asks God open up his eyes that he might see. Yes. And so many times our eyes are closed, amen, to the fact of the matter of what God is really doing in our so lives. So sometimes I learn to always pray all times. Yes. Pray when you're walking, driving, going to the store. Yes. Just have your mind on God. Amen. Yes. Pray when you're fasting, amen. Just have your mind on God. Amen. Because yes. he'll speak to you. Yes. Amen. It doesn't matter if you're at home on your knees. You can be just driving your car and the Spirit of God will begin to speak oh, yes. and give you a message, amen, on what he wants to do in your life. Yes. Amen. I need the music playing very softly in the back. Amen. Praise God. But we're getting ready to pray. I need every believer, amen, to stand with us. We're getting ready to pray. I want to thank God truly for moving. But we pray this morning. And every Sunday morning, we are not praying at 10 o'clock in the morning for God to move up and down in the service. But this morning, amen, praise God. There's some things that's transpiring in the life of God's people. That we get to a point in time to where we don't believe God like we used to. Because listen, God does not change. Somebody say he doesn't change. While we are trying to figure some things out, God is yet working it out. He said, see, if the man, if the servant of God would have only believed, he didn't believe if he would have only just believed, amen, what the man of God said. You got to understand what the man of God says. They that are with us is more than them that are against us. Now, if he would just act upon that, but he didn't believe it because the man of God prayed and said, God, open up 
his eyes that he can see. And I want you to know one thing today, that while we are figuring something out about people that won't change, don't you know that God has assigned angels that got ministering angels that are ministered to the heart of people? Amen. Or get a hold of him. Amen. That he'll send angels, say, man, wherever someone might be and minister the word of God to them. Amen. A change will take place through the anointing of God. He has them sitting and prepared and waiting on his command where to go. That's why a lot of people, amen, survive crucial, critical crashes and still living. Because there was an angel that had been assigned. Amen. To save that person's life. Yeah. Somebody shout glory. glory. Come on shout glory. glory. But as of this day. Amen. I want to pray with this young lady right here. Amen. That God is turning some things around. Amen. And working it out. Somebody shout glory. glory. We give God praise. It's okay. We give God praise. But we want to pray. With this young lady today. In the name of Jesus. Good God Almighty. That God would continue to move in her life. Touch her family members. Hey, there we go. In the name of Jesus. And someone that God is moving upon right now. In the name. Why you worried about it? Amen. I want you to know today that God says, amen, that if you believe that he's dispatching a word and an angel on behalf of an individual yes, that you're just yes. concerned about. As someone your heart is your heart is heavy about. <laughs> your heart is heavy about that God said that he wants you to give it to him and leave it right there. That he's working on him right now. 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 He's working on it right now. In the name of Jesus. He's doing it right now. He's doing it right now. He's doing it right now. As God is sending an angel to trouble his mind, it's time for a change. It's been gone on too long. It's been gone on too long. But I hear the Holy Ghost say this morning. Amen. His time is up. But God is working on this individual right now. He's doing a work right now. I hear the Holy Ghost say he's even touching your body. Worrying yourself a lot of times, amen. Making your blood pressure go up. In the name of, of Jesus. Oh, shout amen. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Hallelujah. 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 He's worthy. Touch her right now, God. Worthy. Worthy. Hallelujah. Worthy. Worthy. Touch her, God. Lord, I love you. God, I love you. Touch her, Jesus. God, I love you. God, I love you. Touch her, God. I love you. Touch her, Lord. Lay your hands on her right now, Father. Come on, God, I love you. In the name of Jesus, keep her, Lord. Keep her heart fixed on you. In the name of Jesus, let her know you start working it out, God. It's getting better. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise and glory. Worthy! All right, listen, friend. I hope that that anointed message met your every need on today. That we realize that through the word of God that the servant of God could not see. But it wasn't until, as we brought the scriptures out, that Elisha asked God to open his eyes. And sometimes, dear friend, that in this world, we're going to have to have the Spirit of God to be able to see the things that are not natural. So listen, whatever you might be dealing with today, know that one thing, that God, through the message, 
has opened your eyes that you may be able to see a man who's against you. God bless you richly.